And so we always talk about this kind of mainstreaming of internet culture, right? I think every single RaffleCon up until this point has had a panel on the mainstreaming of um, internet culture. Um, but I think what we're seeing is not so much the mainstreaming of internet culture as it is the interneting of mainstream culture. And I think that net culture, in a sense, doesn't really exist anymore um, in that everybody who uses a computer you know, experiences net culture. I mean, I feel like you know, we've talked so much about net culture kind of leaving the web and entering the mainstream, but the mainstream is also simultaneously leaving IRL and coming online that we kind of met in the middle, and now we're one and the same. And I think things like these kind of modern forms of memes like Advice Dog are, uh, are representations of this. I mean, now there's this kind of like very basic framework by which most people, average people, the mainstream, you know, understand kind of our culture. Again, something that four years ago felt really like niche and alien and weird, but kind of amazing because we were, we were in on it. Um, and now it's just, you know, kind of a, a, you know, a part of the daily life. Like my mom can grok what Advice Dog is. My mom would not find Power Book funny. Um, and I feel like in that sense, like, Advice Dog is almost like the, the refined sugar of memes in that it's like, yeah, it's funny, it tastes good, but it's also terrible for you. Um, and the, the kind of the real, like I have kind of two concerns. I mean, one is what I feel is kind of the death of what I used to think of as communities. And now just this kind of ubiquity in, you know, in memes in daily culture. And I think that the kind of the price we're paying is kind of a loss of richness um, in that culture. I feel like, you know, if, if I think about just really what like defined my childhood in terms of growing up online and, and, and even the things that were represented at RaffleCon four years ago, I feel like um, you know, we're losing kind of, you know, again, a, a meme is kind of an encapsulation of a story um, and, it, and it captures some sort of an essence of a story. And now I think that it's kind of being stripped of that richness, richness um, in that, you know, now they're so kind of um, you know, basic and whatnot. And so I think of, of kind of this room full of people as you know, very talented people, as creators, and as, as more than anything, storytellers. And I feel like memes were kind of the instruments by which we used to play music, right? And my concern is that you know, with kind of the way that things are going, um, you know, we're kind of gonna lose our song. And so, I mean, my kind of ask would be um, to kind of keep playing your music because you know, without, without us, the web is a very quiet place, so. That's the gist of my, um, my remarks. So I'm curious if anybody, am I just like a really crotchety old guy? <laughs> uh, like an old, old young guy, I guess? Are you like 50? Uh, 48. Yo, boo, we're the only ones who understand you here. <laughs> Seriously. Um, I mean, does anybody else feel like, I mean, I mean, when you look at Advice Dog or, or I mean, not even Advice Dog, but what that represents. I mean, just the fact that there are like five million permutations of Advice Dog. Um, is that rich in the same way that the culture was rich four years ago? Like, do you guys think that people are leaving internet communities or, you know, is, the, is, is, there, is there going, I mean, it's not even so much as, is there gonna be a 4chan in four years, but again, like, do people wanna go to chat rooms and, 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 and forums to kind of meet their tribes or are we all happy to do that on Twitter now? And can we kind of have the same culture? I don't think you can really sustain yourself what you said on sugar. I mean, almost everybody eventually, they start off in these places where it's just, you know, aggregate memes and everything. They're like, hey, you know, a little bit more. So everybody almost seems to, anyone who's serious about the internet, at least, it seems to eventually end up finding one of these communities. But when that used to be the first thing you had to do, that's not something you do, like, maybe even years down your <coughs> career. So we need like is, you get eased in now with all this like. All but then, what are like what are the what are like the whole grains? Like, what is to advice dog? Uh, Mr. Bones wild ride. <laughs> wild <laughs> ride. Um, I can see that. I feel like though. That, I mean, so, do you still use forums on a daily basis? Yes. But do you think that's a function of just the fact that you grew up with the web in a different time? I mean, if you have younger siblings or cousins or you know, nieces uh, well, or nephews. Um, so I made I Want to Be the Guy, and I have a forum. And surprisingly, the forum was filled with 14 to 16-year-olds. I mean, figured the game would be filled with like old people, but surprisingly, even the young generation still finds a need uh, as you to like migrate together into the community. Even more so than all the old guys, because a lot of the old guys didn't get the forum. They're like, ah, I don't know. <laughs> 
So I don't know. I don't think you can really get rid of that need for community. Yeah, to take your analogy one step further, like <coughs> music now. Now there is music that ever there is there means that everyone can enjoy in the mainstream life. So that doesn't mean there isn't still cool indie music out there. It doesn't mean you can't go to some cool back alley club and listen to some band that isn't signed. It's two, two guys who have just been practicing in their spare time to make awesome music. And I think there's always going to be a group of people, a group of young people, who don't want what's available on Facebook, on 9 yet, who go and find those sub subcultures. Sure, as a 20 something, I'm sad that like the weird, creepy sites that made me the weird, creepy adult that I am <laughs> aren't appealing to kids anymore. But they're finding new weird, creepy things. And just because they're friends around 9 yet doesn't mean that everyone's on 9 yet. Right? I, I have hope. The future. You're making me feel better already. This is like really encouraging. <laughs> it's like a support group. <laughs> As an actual old guy, I'll say, you know, I've heard this all before. I mean, something starts out as a niche and it's special, and then it becomes mainstream, and then everybody who was there first raises their hand. You know, that their hands because of it, and then you know finds a way to break out and become niche again. Um, <coughs> we're sort of in the trough um, where you know everything has become you know diluted by the mass media because they're struggling you know to find relevance. Um, you know, and there'll, there'll be you know a new 4chan, whatever that is, using whatever technology you know in a few years. Yeah, I guess, I wish like 4chan has the equivalent of the. Uh you know, they call the, uh, I can't even say this word, but um, new users, uh, summer, <coughs> fill in the rest there. Um, but it is this like eternal, you know, September of, of sorts. It's the endless summer of, uh, of 4chan. I think one of the things that you're ignoring is a lot of the business inputs and the changes that you see in the internet business. I mean, now if you look at Facebook, uh, 9 gang sites like this, they're designing their sites around metrics that optimize the time that users spend on the web. <coughs> You're seeing the sort of crackification of content where they're engineering the perfect type of crack through all of these A-B testing and feedback mechanisms. And, and this creates content that's you know, instant novelty but no depth, and so that it has a, the largest appeal possible. I, I mean, it's sort of like the farm bill of, of, of computer games. I really, I mean, I, I really hope that people, I mean, I, it's, I remember just like finding my way into IRC channels and finding these like little forums as a, as a, you know, teenager, little gaming forums. And, and yeah, there, there's a, I can't even like describe what that feeling is, but it's like a real sense of accomplishment when you kind of like wind your way down the rabbit hole and you finally make your, you know, you make, because it, exactly for the reason is that like, it's kind of hard to find them through search. If I search a gaming forum, right, like I'm not going to. I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of results, but it's like probably not going to be the one because you know everybody has their own. You know, every form will have its own culture and kind of like aesthetic quality to it. And in order to find the one that really you know kind of speaks to me, I mean that's just a process of of you know finding it. And I feel like, and that's why I say I miss AOL because it was this weird. I mean like in the kind of the old you know more directory based internet where you know Yahoo was just like you had to like tunnel through all these direct. You know there was like the concept of search was like still pretty like novel back in the 90s, right? You were like, oh, I've, everything can fit neatly into one little tiny bucket, and I just have to figure out what path I need to take to find that bucket. Um, but there was, a, there was a lot of a word. I think like the, the, when I was just like writing notes down earlier, the, the word I kept coming back to was investment. Um, and I feel like, again, like if, it's hard to imagine somebody investing themselves in 9gag, because again, you're kind of going there for laps. 
Um, whereas in order to become a member of a real you know, community is like to, you know, you accumulate some sort of social capital by being there and it takes just a, a long process of, um, you know, lurking, you know, lurking more and whatnot and seeing how things kind of work and then kind of dipping your toes in the water and, and making a post and if people, you know, yell at you, then you're like, oh shit, I gotta lurk more. Um, and then finally, when you, when you, when you do get a threat, like when you get a thread that gets replies, like that's really, you're like, yes, I win, okay, done. Let me see if I can do that again. Oh, nope, it's gonna take another year. Um, but again, like there was a, there was a, a lot of emotional investment um, and, and a lot of, and then, and, and, you know, the opposite of that just being that, again, there was a lot of reward when you finally did succeed. Um, you know, I think people see that in 4chan just in terms of, again, like meme generation. It's, it's about kind of throwing a lot against the wall and seeing what sticks, and, and when it finally does stick, you're, you, know, you feel great about it. Um, 